Now to New York, where multiple protests have been held in recent weeks, calling for a ceasefire in Gaza. Despite many being organized by Jewish peace activists, protesters have faced accusations of anti-Semitism. On Sunday, human rights activist Cornel West addressed a crowd in front of the UN. He stressed that support for Palestinians does not mean hating anyone else. And don't let anybody tell you that because you love Palestinians and Palestinian babies that you hate somebody else. It just doesn't follow what our brothers are saying. We don't hate Jewish brothers. We don't hate Jewish sisters. We don't hate Jewish siblings. We loathe, we hate a vicious Israeli occupation. Well, Cornel West is a philosopher and political activist, also an independent presidential candidate for 2024. And he joins us now here on Al Jazeera live from New York. Good to have you with us. I find it interesting, Cornel, that when yeah. you say you support the Palestinians there, you felt that you also had to highlight that it doesn't mean you hate Jews. Is the debate so polarised there that you need to make that clarification? Oh, absolutely. You see, I myself, I come from a great black people, been terrorized, traumatized, and hated for 400 years. Jews themselves have been hated, terrorized, and traumatized for 2,000 years. Palestinians have been hated, terrorized, and traumatized by Israelis for 75 years and more. So you're dealing with two groups that have been hated, terrorized, and traumatized. And you have to be clear that it's not, it has nothing to do with anti-Jewish hatred when you talk about love of precious Palestinian brothers and sisters who are undergoing a, bold, a barbaric genocidal attack and assault on their bodies, on their dignity, on their humanity. And it's so easy for the Israeli government, it's so easy for right-wing conservative folk in the American society and empire to accuse me and others of being anti-Jewish mm. simply because we love Palestinians. I make that very clear, but it won't stop our commitment. It won't in any way dampen our fire. We want our Palestinian brothers and sisters to know we care for you. We're concerned about you. We're raising our voices. We're hitting the streets. We go into jail. And if the United States government that is shot through with its moral bankruptcy, its okay. spiritually abs spiritual obscenity, and its Cornell, criminal just want to criminality jump in there because doesn't hear us, then we are going to oppose our own government. What, what good, actually, at the end of the day, does that do, coming out and saying that you support Palestinians? How actually can you make any changes to the situation that the guard, people in Gaza are facing right now? Well, one is put pressure so that we have both a ceasefire, we have an exchange of hostages and Palestinian political prisoners and those who are detained in Israeli jails, and then the end of the siege and the end of the occupation that gets at the very source and, and core of this whole situation. And in addition to that, my dear sister, it's also a matter of one's own personal integrity. How do we live in such a barbaric world and have some sense of morality and spirituality? How do we remain committed to justice and love, not hatred and revenge, but justice and love, given the overwhelming grimness of this situation that we see with our precious Palestinians having to undergo this kind of barbarity? How are you using your platform now as an independent presidential candidate to boost your message? Well, one is we have to shatter the lies. There's been attempts to rationalize and justify Israeli occupation, Israeli subjugation, Israeli degradation, and we have to be critical of our Palestinian brothers and sisters. If they're engaging in killing innocent people, those are war crimes, I'm critical of that. If they're degrading Jews, if they're anti-Jewish, I'm critical of that. But I'm keeping track right now of the structures and the institutions. And as a candidate, I want to rise above the hatred, rise above the revenge, and part of the legacy of Martin King and Fannie Lou Heyman, Rabbi Heschel and Edward Zaid is what? To accent justice. To accent justice. What does justice look like? Equal dignity, equal rights, equal access to resources of Palestinians and Jews in that region of the world. When you look at the Democratic Party right now, what do you see? Do you see a party that has these values or do you see the divisions? I'm thinking particularly of the silencing of Rashida Tlaib. She's the only Palestinian American in Congress and she was silenced recently when she was trying to speak up on these issues. 
Yeah, well, I stand with my dear sister Rashida very much so. But no, when I look at the Democratic Party, I see bankruptcy. It's, it's, it's ethically bankrupt that it's willing to enable genocide. The Israeli government willing to enact it, U.S. government willing to enable it. We have to be very, very clear. We have to be very, very honest. We have to be candid. And we have to speak very, very fearlessly. And unfortunately, we even have a whole wave of black leaders who are so scared and intimidated and afraid of APEC. They're afraid of the Anti-Defamation League. They're afraid of any kind of pressures brought to bear on them so that they don't have their own status. Where's their commitment to truth? Where's their commitment to justice? What kind of integrity do they have? Can they put a smile on the face of Martin King and Malcolm X? Can they put a smile on the face of Ella Baker? Those are the moral and spiritual standards, and I want to be true to the standards of moral and spiritual greatness, which have to do with our common humanity, which have to do with our precious humanity. And that's the challenge right now in this moment of overwhelming grimness. One that you are rising well to. Cornell West, many thanks indeed for taking the time to Thanks. join us here on Al Jazeera. Thank you so much.